What is going on guys? This is Daniel and the Grizzlies have surprised some people with a good start to the season. They have a 15 and 10 record and the biggest reason for that has been their defense. They have the fourth ranked defense in the NBA and there are many reasons for that and two of the biggest are their positional size and length and their ability to force turnovers. Those are the two topics I'll be focusing on in this video as I look to explain why they're having so much defensive success. So let's get to it. If we take a look at the starting lineup and their heights, we see that at every position except point guard, they're massive. And Anderson and Jackson in particular, I know have very long wingspans as well. The effect it has on offenses is seen all throughout the game, sometimes in very subtle ways like this. Here for example, Anderson has a bit of ground to make up for on the closeout, but he does and is able to contest really well because of his length and he makes that three tough for Crowder. Sometimes the impact is more obvious. Here for example on the roll, you'll see Gasol rotate over to Hollis Jefferson while Jackson is also recovering and when Hollis Jefferson makes the mistake of challenging them, we see he never had a chance. Having a rim protector or power forward is not a luxury most teams have and the fact that the Grizzlies have Jackson there makes it even harder to score at the rim. Here for example, Gasol really isn't in position to help on the drive, but Jackson is already rotating and he ends up getting the block. They also have good size off their bench and most notably at small forward where Caspi is 6'9 and we see the effect here as he's able to get a deflection because of his size and that screws up the whole possession for the Nets and they end up turning it over. And it's no surprise then that the Grizzlies average 15.1 deflections per game, which is ranked 5th in the league. Now let's talk about forcing turnovers. Opposing teams commit a turnover versus the Grizzlies on 17.3% of possessions, and the Grizzlies are ranked 2nd at forcing turnovers. Let's start with, well, length. That's one reason they're able to force so many turnovers, and here Anderson uses his length to pickpocket D'Angelo Russell. On this play, Anderson uses his length and good fundamentals to steal a backdoor pass. Now let's get to gap help, and the Grizzlies help in the gap more than usual on drives. And here's an example as Shelvin Mack gets to below the foul line to take away the drive toward the middle, and he usually wouldn't help this much on the drive, but he's smart. On this play, he's guarding Rubio, who's not a good shooter, so he can help more than normal, and here his help forces the turnover. Here on a pick and roll toward the middle, we see Jermichael Green help at the foul line using good hands to knock the ball loose. And you can see how this help can force ball handlers to turn it over. Now, of course for this to be an effective tactic, the Grizzlies have to execute it well, and they do. And here's a really good example. So as Russell comes for the handoff on this play, we see Caspi already begin to anticipate the middle drive. So he begins to come over toward the foul line to help. So now when Russell does look to drive, Caspi is already at the nail in position to help. Then he quickly stunts at the ball and on the pass he can recover to Carroll. And we see Mack do the same thing on Carroll's drive. He gets in position to help, recovers to Russell on the pass, and this is a really nice defensive possession. Now I also wanted to show you this play, which is an example of how not to gap help. And first off, it's very risky to help too much from the corner, which is what Bogdanovich does. But the big mistake on this play was Collison drives and Bogdanovich is a tad late. So he's still sliding over as Collison is approaching the paint. And now on the pass, we see Bogdanovich is flat footed. He doesn't move with the flight of the ball like we saw Caspi do. Instead, his momentum is still going toward Collison and he's not able to recover. Back to the Grizzlies, and I want to talk about how they sometimes help the helper when they gap help. This is what I mean. So Mack comes over to take away the drive toward the middle, and he's a bit late getting out to his man Corey Joseph. But no worries, as Conley will stunt from the corner at Joseph, and he has no intention of leaving the corner shooter, but the stunt makes Joseph hesitate. That is what allows Mack to recover in time, and they force the fadeaway. Let's actually watch this play one more time and keep your eye on Joseph. Notice how he'll pass fake to the corner as he wasn't sure if Conley was going to rotate all the way to him or not.
Now, no matter how good at the gap help you are, you're bound to give up some threes and the Grizzlies do. Here, for example, Conley helps in the gap and the Nets do a nice job of moving it and they space well and they get an open three for Crab. Moving on to their pick and roll defense, and I would say the main way they force more turnovers with this is that they tag the roll man more frequently and more aggressively than most teams. Here, Temple comes to tag the roll man, and we see that Dinwiddie is open in the corner, but under pressure, guards are bound to make mistakes, and here Napier throws it to the roll man anyway, and it's a turnover. A lot of teams only defend the pick and roll with two guys, and that confuses Rubio, a great passer here, as he sees Gobert open on the roll, but he doesn't see Jackson tagging to disrupt the action. There is risk reward of course, like the gap help this gives up threes, and the Grizzlies give up a lot of corner threes, here Temple helps too much on the roll, and that gives up the three. But generally, the Grizzlies do a good job of helping, recovering, and scrambling. Here, we see Conley does a nice job getting to the nail on the pick and roll, getting there early, so now, when Dinwiddie is loading up his pass, Conley can immediately start recovering to his man. And we see that the ball is in the air, and Conley has all but recovered to Crab. The concept of getting in position early is the same as the gap help. And here, Anderson also recovers, and the Grizzlies force a tough shot. Another way the Grizzlies force turnovers in the pick and roll is that they'll trap step up ball screens toward the sideline. And we see that here, Gasol is ready to trap and they force the turnover. This trap is not something every team executes and they're able to do this because Gasol has a really nice feel for this trap. And it may not be easy to focus on this graphic because of its artistic beauty, but let's talk about Marcus Soul and how he helps the Grizzlies force turnovers. He averages 1.5 steals per game which leads the Grizzlies, and he's 22nd in the NBA in steals per game, which makes him the third leading center in steals behind Davis and Steven Adams. He's able to do this because he's just that smart. Here for example in the pick and roll, we see he anticipates the pocket pass so he gets his left hand low, this is good fundamentals, and he gets the steal. He plays within his strengths which is his intelligence, so here when he comes to help he doesn't go for the shot block, but he's able to sense that Exum is actually looking to pass because of the help, and so at the last second we see Gasol taper off and look to guard the pass to Gobert, and Exum throws it right to Gasol. He also doesn't have to record a steal to create a turnover. On this play, the Nets are down at the end of the shot clock and they'll look to run a high pick and roll. And his normal coverage would be to drop back a bit, but because the shot clock is at 2, Gasol recognizes this so he comes to trap Russell to prevent him from getting a shot up at all, and that's exactly what happens. Very smart D. He does everything right on time. Here, Thad Young is posting up, and the moment he spins baseline, Gasol comes for the late double team help. This surprises Young, and he turns it over. Well, there you have it guys. Hope you learned something about the Grizzlies defense, and also about defense in general. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.